She's been having some health issues. So we're going to be sending around the camera here. And uh, we just want you to, you know, say something to her, get well, or uh, tell her how she's doing. Anybody that's here that, that doesn't know Laquita or Cherry, that's okay. Just, just you can speak anyway. They're wonderful people, and uh, we just want to lift Laquita up. You're, you're wonderful too, Joe. Thank you, Eddie. <laughs> my my uh, gallery there. Wow, I gave a good laugh, man. All right, while everybody's quiet, I'll go ahead and do the announcements. First of all, I just got one thing to say. God is good, isn't he? Yes, he is. Everybody in this room is walking in favor. So let's never forget that, okay? No matter how bleak things may get at times or troubles that we're having, we are all favored by an awesome, awesome God. Um, anyway, tonight, welcome. We have some new guests here. Let me, uh, this is Kingdom Crusader. We meet in here every Saturday night at 7.30. A couple of times a month we eat. Tonight is, is one of those nights, so you guys picked a good night to be here. Um, Antonio Garcia is with us. Tony. Tony. Hi, Tony. Welcome, welcome. Carol Albert, I know she's right there. Welcome, Carol. And uh, Gonzalo. Gonzalo. All right, Gonzalo. So happy you joined us tonight. Um, so anyway, tonight's Joe's night, which we all know. By, by the way, well, I will when we're done. Um, next week, we're just having an off. We're having class, but we're not doing any activity, no food or anything like that. Um, last week we talked about the 28th. We will be meeting on the 28th. Uh, so we will be meeting on the 28th, and normally that's the night we go to Joe's. I don't know if we want to do that next week, uh, we'll, you know, whatever, but uh, because it's, you know, the Easter weekend, well, the, the weekend before. Easter Bunny. But uh, normally we go to Joe's that night, we just go there and with the pastor and other people, and we just hang out and have a good time. Um, we're still working on the Marlins game, but it seems like we might be better off trying to find a Friday night game, because Friday night... Seems to be better for people for work and everything. So Cliff is working on that. And as soon as we get maybe a date and some day, I know they have a couple during the year, uh, faith nights, so that might be a night. But uh, we always have a good time. But it's just hard on a, on a Monday with people work and everything, especially to get 50 people. So, but we're working on that. Um, this month, we're just, we're just really cooling it this month. We're not really doing any extra activities because of all the Easter events at the end hey, of the Rita, month. You made it, Rita. <laughs> and, uh, but we are having uh, men's and women's night out. Uh, we're doing them on the same night, which is March the 24th, which will be a week from this coming Tuesday. The women are meeting at Red Lobster on University Drive. Uh, C. Lynn or Leilani, they, they're heading that up. And the men are gonna be meeting at Bow Campers. We'd like to really get a good guy turnout because um, usually we're, the girls beat us pretty bad, so. Um, but anyway, see either Cliff or myself, or Mike, Mike, Big Mike, also. Any one of the three of us, you know? I'll be in Vegas. Oh, that's right. Mike, Mike will be in Vegas, so just see either Cliff or myself. Uh, Tuesday, the 24th. That's Medora's birthday, too. Happy birthday, Medora, in case we forget. Uh, got a lot of birthdays in that family. Wow. Um, what else we have? I wanna, we want to thank Lynn for that great cake that she made. Wow, was that awesome? Thank you, Lynn. Um, we are going to, uh, we're going to do a movie night in April. I think it's going to be the 24th. Um, we're going to try to do a Movie nights seem to really, a lot of people like them, we have a lot of fun with those, so we're going to try to do them every month, or every six weeks from now on. Uh, it's a good activity, and we do it right here, and it's, it's just uh, a lot of fun. And then, of course, our picnic is the 17th of May, which is, will be here before you know it, and probably the end of this month, the very beginning of next month, we'll start sending around the sign-up sheet, and uh, we would like to get a really good count of, of uh, who's going to be coming to that. And we need some money in the account, so we always have our baskets out. And as I always say, 
contribute at any time. We use those for class activities. Um, we still need a person, I think, for the salad for the second Saturday in April. We already got them. Okay, we don't need that anymore. Thank you to Andres and Medora for the salad tonight. Who bought the ice cream? I did. Thank you, Reed and Mike, I guess, for the ice cream. So we need someone for salad for the second Saturday in May. See Karen and uh, let her know if you he can help her out with that. Um, I think that's it. Any questions with any of these announcements or anything we talked about? Once again, if you weren't in the room, we're sending the camera around to speak to Laquita so we can uh, hopefully bring a smile to her face, some joy in her life right now with what she's dealing with. Also losing her mom not too long ago. So. Uh, keep them in prayer, please, because they're wonderful, wonderful people, God-loving people. Um, and uh, so let's pray and we'll get started. Oh, by the way, Mark teaching us again tonight. So everybody that likes Mark's teaching, you have huh? He's going to do a wonderful job, I'm sure. Larry will be critiquing him, though, so. <laughs> all right, let's pray and let's get going, all right? Father God, we just love you so much, Lord, and we just thank you for this night. We thank you for everyone that's here, God. We thank you that we walk in your favor, Lord. We ask you to use us, Lord. Let us be bold in telling people about you, God. Let us be bold in telling them about your son and what he's done for every one of us, Lord. We thank you for this food, Lord, that we had tonight, God. It was so good. We just thank you for the blessings you provide every single day. We thank you for everyone that's here. We pray blessing upon them. We ask the Holy Spirit to be here tonight as Mark teaches us. We, we pray that uh, he, our hearts will be open to learning something new about you, Lord. Uh, because at this, at this place where we are, we're just all about Jesus and his word. So we love you, and it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Are we ready to start? Is that Enjoy church tonight. Did anybody yeah. enjoy church? Yeah. Well, I was telling Larry before the problem we have is I was going to speak about Joseph. So we're out of luck now. Can't do it. I love hearing about Joseph. Come on. I'm kidding. I was not going to do it. I love the story. I love the story. Uh, we, we are in favor. I think everybody kind of knows that, especially in this room. Um, another thing. Well, Laurie knows this because she knows me, but I really like music. Now, I can't sing anymore because I'm deaf. And it's really bad, really bad. But over the years, I know everybody's got their favorite singers. And for the people who are old, probably the best voice I've ever heard was Bing Crosby. Not crazy about the music. Don, it's way before your time. But great voice. Uh, some of my favorites were Patsy Cline. I loved Patsy Cline. I thought Elvis was incredible. Uh, just so you don't think I'm a bigot or anything, I loved George Michael. Not, not a big fan of the lifestyle, but loved the singing. What about Marvin Gaye? What? Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye, yeah, he's Let's good. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> what about Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson was good. Pre-surgery, he was very good. He was yeah. a big pot. Yeah. He didn't know if he wanted to be white or black. Yeah, if he's black or white, it's like the cookie. Yeah. Uh, but other, Ann Murray had a perfect voice. Yeah. 
Uh, Steve Perry and Journey, one of my all-time favorites. Believe it or not, um, the American Idol, Adam Lambert, Adam Lambert, incredible singer. He's not a good singer. He's a good singer. He's not a good singer. You like Bill Collins? Bill Collins? No. no. Bill Collins is terrible. We don't talk about Bill Collins. But, okay, here's the thing. How many people have you heard sing that as soon as they open their mouth, the hair stands up on your neck? I don't have a hair cut at all. I know what you're going to say. I don't know what you're going to say. Don't say a word. I know. I don't have a hair cut at all. Who, who's the singer that makes your cutter. hair stand up on your neck? Hair cutter. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson? Okay, we got, we got two Michael Jacksons. Michael Finn. I could get that, okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Michael Jackson. That's three Michael Jacksons. I wait for the myself. You? Yes. Did you sing about the hair will stand up on my neck? I was in Neverland Ranch. I met Michael. Oh, so you're not singing, you just know Michael Jackson. Yeah, okay. I think we're friends. Okay. Bruno Mars. Who? Bruno Mars. Yeah. Bruno Mars? I'm too old for Bruno Mars. I do like him. I'm Casper. I missed that one. Who? Bill Collins. Bill Collins. Where's all this Phil Collins coming from? Phil Collins was a great drummer, not a great singer. He's a pretty good singer. Hey, Mark, what about Elvis? Mark, what about Elvis? We said Elvis, yeah. What about the Beatles? Peter Gabriel. Peter Gabriel. Peter Gabriel. Barbara Streisand, perfect voice. Not my style of music, but perfect voice. I like Bob Marley. Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston. Mariah Carey, yeah. I like Billy Joel. I like Billy Joel. I like Billy Joel. Mark, what about Bob Marley? What about Bob Marley? No, okay, these are good singers, but who? Okay, we gotta get quiet. Stuart, your table's too noisy back there. Calm down. Calm down. But who is it when they sing, not just that you like them, but that the hair stands up on your neck when you hear them sing? Some readers. You can read it on the screen, but I need some people that will read for me because my voice won't last that long. You, Elmador? Yeah. Who else? I'll read. Joe? I'll read. Okay. I'll read Mark. I know how to read. I could use about 10 people. I know how to read. Okay. If you want to read, drag your chair and put it right here. <laughs> you, already, you already volunteered. You already volunteered. Got to do it. Go ahead. Got to do it. You should read. Who else? We need some more readers. Just grab a chair. Grab a chair. We got a couple chairs here. You don't have to stay there the whole time. Just, this, this way you can reach the microphone. So. Who else we got? Who else we got? Where's Mike? Mike reads me. Mike is the kitchen. Mike is the kitchen. Mike is the kitchen. Mike is the kitchen. I like to read. Okay, we got three. We need some more. We got three. We got four. Four? Okay. 
screen, so if you don't, you can see it up here, that's fine. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did the New King James, so if it looks different than what you've got, don't worry about it, that's what it, that's what it is. Uh, we're going to read this, we've got readers up here that are going to do this, and then we're going to discuss a few things. We'll try to do this quick for you, okay? We're going to go down a line. Jamie, you're first. I'll click the screens. Do one screen and we'll click it, then we'll start over. Everybody ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Jesus, Jesus faces Pope Pilate. Immediately in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus, led him away, and delivered him to Pilate. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered and said to him, It is as you say. And the chief priest accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. Then Pilate asked him again, saying, Do you answer nothing? See how many things they testify against you. But Jesus still answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Thank you. Now, at the feast, he was accustomed to releasing the one prisoner to them, whomever they requested. And there was one, there was one named Barabbas, who was chained with his fellow rebels. They had committed murder in the rebellion. Then, the multitude, the multitude, crying aloud, began to ask him to do just as he always had always done for them. But Pilate answered, saying, Do you want me to release you to the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had handed him over because of envy. <laughs> But the chief priests stirred up the crowd so that he should rather release Barabbas to them. Pilate answered and said to them again, What then do you want me to do with him whom you call the king of the Jews? So they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wanting to gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole garrison, and they clothed him with purple, and they twisted a crown of thorn, put it on his head, and began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they stuck him on the head with a reed and spat on him and borrowing his knee. They worshipped him twenty and then they had mocked him. They took the purple off him, put his own clothes on him, and lead him out to crucify them. Let's go back. Let's take it. We'll go back down this way. 
Then they compelled a certain man, Simon a Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, as he was coming out of the country and passing by to bear his cross. And they brought him to the place Galatha, which is translated place of a skull. Then they gave him wine mingled with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. And when they crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots of them, lots for them to determine what every man should take. Now it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the inscription of his accusation was written above, the king of the Jews. With him they also crucified two robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled which says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha! You who destroyed the temple and built it in three days, thirty, save yourself and come down from the cross. <laughs> Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking among themselves with the scribes, said, he saved others, himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him reviled him. Now when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabagathani, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood by when they heard that said, Look, he's calling for Elijah. Then someone ran and filled a sponge full of sour wine, put it on a reed, and offered it to him to drink, saying, Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come and take him down. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his breath his last. Then the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. So when a centurion who stood opposite him, saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the less and of Joseph, and Stephen, who also followed him and ministered to him when he was in Galilee, and many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. Jesus buried in Joseph's tomb. Now when evening had come, because it was the preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent council member, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, coming and taking courage, went into Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate marveled that he was already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him if he had been dead for some time. So when he found out from the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph. Then he borrowed a fine line, took him down, and wrapped him in the line, and he um, lead him in the tongue which had been heard out, out of the rock and rolled a stone against the door of the tongue and 47 and Mary Mat Madeline and Mary the mother of Joseph Joseph that's right of Sir where he was um, need led Let's give him a hand. Go <laughs> see Larry. Go see Larry. Catch your hand. Larry. Larry. Good job. Good job. Good job. Okay. Who does not know that story? Everybody know the story? Okay. Now we're in Mark here. Understand? There's there's more than one. Uh, description of this set of events. Everybody knows what came right before this. The story at the start. The Garden of Gethsemane. 
And it, it was what Larry was speaking of a couple weeks ago when they went through the Last Supper to say, this was after that. What is it before? What happened right after the story ended? Easter. Somebody said Easter. We're close. Kiss of death. Resurrection. Okay. Uh, we will deal with that later. Right now, we're just talking about this time in between. Now, let me ask you this. And of course, I know I know a lot of you here. Um, who's had a bad day every now and then? Have you ever had one of those? No. no. We need to think about that when we complain, right? Yes. Yeah. When you were in the hospital, that was a bad day. Well, you probably don't even remember it. She does. She does. But you weren't beaten and stuck on the cross, were you? right? Okay, everybody gets that? Right? Shirley? Yeah. You've had a bad day? Yeah, Monday. You had more than one? Yeah. Everybody, we need to give Shirley a hand in case anybody doesn't know what happened to her. Right. And either she feels a lot better or she's taking a lot of pills. I'm not sure. <laughs> you good? You good? Okay. All right. Uh, the question is this. Just like said in church, we're favored. We have not had to personally go through this. I doubt any of us will have to go through that personally. Personally. But we take a lot of things for granted. Now, we're not going to go through the whole thing. We're just going to have a couple of highlights. Larry, what time we stop? When do we stop? 10 o'clock. No, midnight. Keep going. Keep going. Well, I know, but I just want to know what time. So I know what time. 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. Nine. It's not a democracy. I'll get in trouble. Nine? Nine? You go that late? About 10. We'll be out before that. We'll About, be out 10. Before that. About 10. Okay, let's just go through and hit a couple of high points. Immediately in the morning, the chief priest had a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. Who were the elders and scribes and the whole council? The Pharisees. The Pharisees, yeah. These were the governing bodies. Were they Roman or Jewish? Roman. Jewish. I heard both. Which are they? Jewish. All right, Jewish. Okay. They bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. Why? Why take him to Pilate? Pilate was not Jewish. Roman governor. But he was Roman. It was under Roman control. Okay? Reason being, what was the whole point? Again, we started where they, they seized him in the garden. Yes, Emma. Uh, what predicated all of this was Jesus became a threat to the structure. Okay? He was a threat to the power structure, not of the Romans as much as the Pharisees. Okay? It's a very important point. Now, they were questioning him. Why were they questioning him? What was the point? Can, can you see him? Why were they questioning him? Stu? See if they can trip him up. Yeah? Did they trip him up? No. No. Okay. Now, Pilate asked him, say, again, do you answer nothing? Why was he saying that? Because Jesus wouldn't answer. What did it say in the Old Testament? when the Lamb of God would come, that he would be led to the slaughter and he would not say a word. Yes, Stuart? Okay, go ahead. Say it anyway. No, we already said that. No, we already said that. Okay, now at the feast, what feast are we talking about? Passover. What's it called? Passover. Keep going. You know it, Karen. Besides, what's, what's it called? Feast of Unleavened Bread. Feast of Unleavened Bread, okay? Uh, at the feast, they will always release a prisoner. We all know the story, right? Everybody knows the story, correct? Okay. Now, we also know there was one Barabbas who was chained with his fellow rebels, which is the way the New King James says it. Some of the translations use a little more flowery language. Uh, they had committed murder. Uh, the multitude cried aloud. They began to ask, do just as it, you know, but Pilate answered them and said, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Why was Pilate trying to get them to release the king of the Jews? He did not want this on his hands. He did not want it on his hands. Remember, he questioned him, he questioned him, and he even says, which we're going to get to, this man's done nothing wrong. If you look at one of the other accounts, one of the other gospels, I did this one for a reason, and we'll get there. Okay. 
uh, the chief priest stirred up the crowd so that they would rather release Barabbas to them. Why? Why would they want to release Barabbas, who we know is not a nice guy, instead of Jesus? Yeah. Pilate answered again and said, What then do you want me to do with him who you call the king of the Jews? He's telling them, It's your king. What do you want me to do? And he's doing everything he can to get his hands clean of this. He does not want to deal with it. Right? But, what did they say? Okay. Okay. Here's what Pilate says. This is very key. Why? What evil has he done? What evil did Jesus do? Let's go down, let's go down the list. He healed people. He gave them hope. He brought the good news. He fulfilled the scriptures of his own people, the Hebrew scriptures. He did nothing bad. And Pilate knows this. Pilate's saying, what has he done? Why are you, you guys nuts? Okay? Now, was Pilate a believer? Probably not. There's nothing that says he was. But he was a wise enough man that he was in the position he was in, and he knew this is not good. This is not good. But he also knew that if the crowd turns on him, they may get him. Okay. Everybody kind of watches their own backside. Yeah. You ask a question, Jimmy? The way he was, the way he was being passive with the judgment. Now, I know, yes, he didn't want to understand the judgment. But somewhat of me believes that My opinion, that's what I think. But that's my opinion. I think I think the evidence would show that he's sitting there going, hey, this guy may actually be the son of God because they all knew the story. They all knew it. You know, you had demons that knew he was Jesus. You know, you had people that had never met him that said, that's the son of God. I mean, this was not an unknown. The problem is, this guy is sitting in a pretty powerful position. And he's trying to say, I don't think this is a good idea. Okay? Because he knows, this is my opinion here, if this is the son of God and I do this, I got a problem. These people are one thing, but if there's a God and this is his son, I got a real big problem. So I agree with you. That's my opinion. Don't anybody, I'm not saying... Because there's nothing that says anything different. Okay, here's why. So Pilate, wanting to gratify the crowd, releases Barabbas to them, and he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him. What scourged him mean? But it was that, that whip with the razor blades on it? Yeah. They beat him. They beat him. Okay? Then the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole garrison, and they clothed him with purple. Why purple? Royalty. Color of royalty. We went through that last week, remember? The lady who sold the purple gowns. Color of royalty. Why would they put that on him? They were marketing. They said, you're a king, wear purple. Wear purple, right? They twisted a crown of thorns. Again, same thing, they're mocking him. You're a king, let's give you a crown. And they put it on his head and he be and began to salute him. Hail, king of the Jews. Now, this was not an effort of affection. This was mocking. They were mocking him. Okay. Then they struck him on the head with a reed and spit on him. And bowing, bowing the knee, they worshipped him in mockery. And when they had mocked him, they took the purple off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. Um, I'm not saying anything about that. Okay. Then they compelled a certain man, Simon the Cyrenian, and to carry the cross. Everybody knows this part of the story, right? Because we're, we're all just getting to a point here. Okay. As we go through this, um, down here. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots for them to determine what every man should take. Why would they do that? What, what does casting lots mean? They're, they're betting. Yeah, they're betting on him, right? Why would they want his clothes? Well, basically, that's what they did. You know, a lot of people didn't have one robe, stuff like that. Okay, yes, Stuart. And also fulfilling prophecy. That's it. But did they know they were fulfilling a prophecy? Probably not. Probably not. Okay. 
Now, when it was the third hour, and they crucified him, and the inscription of his accusation was written above him, the king of the Jews. Why would they put that on there? Again, they're mocking him, and they're mocking God, because what they're saying is, hey, you're the king of the Jews? Let's see you get out of this one. Okay? When they had also crucified two robbers, one on his right, the other on his left, so the scripture was fulfilled, which says that he was numbered with his transgressors. How many scriptures did this day fulfill? Anybody have an idea? I don't, I don't I mean, I've heard it, but I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah. I can't hear you. I still can't hear you. A good amount? Yeah, oh yeah. It's, it's a lot. You go through, even that he was going to be crucified on a tree was prophesied back when they didn't crucify people on trees. But they said he would die hanging on a tree. All this was fulfilled in this day. Okay? Yeah. And those who passed by, passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Why would they talk about being the temple in three days? What was that about? Jesus said it. He said, I will destroy this temple and build it back in three days. Now, they didn't know what he was talking about. And that's what they're talking about. They, they're all looking at this from an earthly perspective. He was not speaking from an earthly perspective. Likewise, the chief priest also, mocking among themselves with the scribes, said, He saved others, himself he cannot. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. Again, we need to see it. Right? If you're the king, we need to see. Yes, do. Yeah, this 32 stuck out at me when you read it. You guys said the Christ. And all this we talk about king of the Jews stuff, right? But see, Christ means Messiah. You've got to keep in mind that when they say Christ, they're talking to Messiah. And you know, they're talking Greek here, but everything else is yep. Hebrew. Yep. And it's Yeshua HaMashiach, which is Jesus the Christ, and Jesus the Messiah. Yep. And they, the Greeks promised to know the references to Messiah. How much of that was not prophesied? Not all of it was. All of it was. Okay. Now, when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. What time is the sixth hour? Noon. Noon. Okay. So from noon to three, it was dark. And then at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabbatani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What was he talking about? Why, why was he thanking God for, was forsaking him? Because he's human. This is God, human. Now understand, Jesus didn't come to the earth for God's benefit. He came for our benefit. He became man because we can't comprehend the God that we can't physically see. So God became something we could relate to. That's what it was. Now, some who stood by, and they heard, they said, look, he's calling for Elijah. They didn't know what he was saying. They said, he's probably going crazy here. I mean, if you're sitting there hung on a cross, you're beaten to death, you're probably going to be a little, uh, not too lucid, right? He cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. It tells you what he says in some of the other narratives, and all the Gospels have it. I think Acts refers to it a little bit too. Now, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, predicted and prophesied in the Old Testament. Okay? So when the Shaturian who stood opposite him saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last breath, he said, truly, this man was the Son of God. Now think about that. If you were the centurion and you stood there and you just witnessed this, how much of an effect would that have? Again, bad day? Truly. Yeah, I'd say so. All right. Okay, there were also women looking from afar, Mary Magdalene. We all know the rest of the story. Uh, and when evening came, because it was the preparation day, what's the preparation day? Stu, Karen, what are you tell us? Tell me. First fruits? The preparation day. Preparation. For Passover. Right? So preparation day, and the, uh, the custom was that you had to have certain things done before the Sabbath started, because the Sabbath starts at sundown, correct? So you have to have all your stuff done before then. 
because once Passover starts, you can't do it. So now it's preparation day. They've got a guy on a cross here, so they've got to deal with that. So this day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a prominent council member, this was not just some low-life guy walking by. This was a guy with money and power and prestige in the community, and he had a tomb. Now, we're not going into the details, but think about this. Why would somebody who could risk their position in society go to get this phony, self-claiming king that just got hung on a cross and, and beaten to death? Why would he do that? He knew. He knew. Okay, as a matter of fact, it's not in this narrative, it's in the other ones. I know it's in John. Uh, who else helped him? Anybody remember? We went through this several months ago. Nicodemus? Who, who said it? Joe. Nicodemus? Who? Nicodemus. Nicodemus. That's right. I don't know who said it. I just heard it. Yeah. Nicodemus. Where do we know Nicodemus from? <laughs> John chapter 3. Remember, he went to Jesus and said, what is this being born again? I can't do that again, all this. He explained it. Now, we learn later in John that Nicodemus, who was also a man of social standing, and at great risk, he became a believer. And he actually helped prepare Jesus' body to do it. Because he knew. He knew. Joseph knew. He knew. The centurion who said, surely this is the man, this was the son of God. He knew. He knew. Okay? Now, Pilate marveled that he was already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him if he had been dead for some time. So when he found out from the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph. Why? Wasn't well, going to give it to him until he was dead. Well, usually it takes longer than six months. It takes a lot longer. And what do they do to make sure they're dead? They break the legs. Did they break Jesus' legs? No. Why not? Two reasons. Two reasons. Why not? He was already dead, and the prophecy said they would not be broken. Do you think they knew that? Probably not. No. Probably not. Then he bought fine linen, he took him down and wrapped him in the linen, he laid him in the tomb, which had been hewn out of the rock, and rolled a stone against the door of the tomb, and Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, observed where he was laid. Now, we're stopping there, but why is that important? Because what happens three days from now? The away. People knew where he was. It wasn't a mistake. Nothing, right? Okay, I need um. You do this really quick. You don't have to sing right now. <laughs> if we have enough, if you can't read, give it to somebody else who can. Everybody got one? Okay, here we go. Jesus said seven things from the cross, okay? All of them were not in the Mark narrative. Some of them in the other gospel we found. There's seven of them that he said. We're just going to go through them real quick. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Why? Why would he say that? Yeah. He loves us. Can't hear you. Because he loves us? Yes. Yes. And also... He was telling how they don't know what they did. Right. Don't blame them. They don't know what they did. Yeah, Jamie. Do you think also because maybe they didn't want the wrath of God like when God bestowed upon Egypt? What's this all about? Fulfillment of prophecy. And redemption. Right? Even though he's going through the worst day of his life, let's be realistic here, okay? Something we're never going to have to go through, and I can assure you none of us have gone through this. He said they're going, don't blame them. They don't know what they're doing. The guy is beaten to death. Beaten to death, they got him nailed to a cross. And he's saying, don't blame them. Don't blame them. Okay? Number two, today you will be with me in paradise. Who did he tell that to? God. Why? What, what was he answering the question? I didn't put the whole thing in here. Forget about me. He had faith and believed in you. The guy acknowledged who he was. Right? A little sidebar. If he's going to be with him today in paradise, did he have to be baptized to get there? No. 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 Okay. Woman, behold your son, behold your mother. Who's he saying that to? It's not a trick question. Yeah. He'll take, take care of his mother, right? And his mother saying, look what they've done to me, right? Again, I'm just pulling the phrases out. Of, I'll put the verse references on there, right? Look at the verses so you get the context, okay? 
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We just went through that. Okay, look at it in context. I thirst. What's the meaning behind that? He was thirsty. That's it. He was thirsty. It is finished. What's finished? His life is over. The fulfillment. That's what it was. The fulfillment. Now, what had just happened the day before? The feast of unleavened bread, which is known later as Passover, right? And what is it all about? What was Passover about? God saving his people, saving the firstborn, bringing them out of Egypt, right? It's finished means I have just completed the mission, which he became a substitution for us. He did that. Okay. Again, the old adage. If Emily's playing in the street and I see a car coming, I'm chicken, but you know what? I'll take the hit to push her out of the way. He took the hit for us. All of us. All of us. Okay? Last one. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. What's the secret meaning of that? Very secretive. He's telling God. He's not his son. Who in here has a spirit? All of us. Okay, who in here has an evil spirit? <laughs> Stuart, you're bad, but you don't have an evil spirit. It's okay. okay. Uh, because when you take your last breath, what happens to your spirit? It separates from your body. Better hope it goes up. It's going somewhere. It's going somewhere because your temporary dwelling closes the doors. That spirit's going somewhere. Right? <coughs> Hopefully all of us, our spirit is going with what he said. Now, what does that mean? Anybody know what that means? Nobody? Who's that ring tuna out of a jar? Jar. 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 You ate tuna out of a jar? Why? Can. Can. I didn't say can, I said jar. Can. Not a can, a jar. A jar. Have you done that? What country were you in? <laughs> okay, this is the whole deal. I don't care about the nut and the jar of tuna, but it is a thing. No matter how many ways you try and twist that, you can write it completely backwards, it says the same thing. No matter how many ways they try to twist the essence of the gospel, which is that Jesus was the Son of God, He came to earth as a man, He lived, He taught, He fulfilled the scriptures, and He died. They can twist it any way they want, but it still says the same thing. Same thing, right? We did, but you're going to remember a nut and a jar of tuna. You're going to remember that. Okay? All right, Cliff, can you switch us to the video? Do we have any questions before that? Everybody good? Yes, sir. If it's Easter, Monday, still next week. Can we talk about So we all, you know, they say our own sin killed Jesus. It was fulfillment. It, it had to be that way. Man. So remember, he told Judas to go do what you're supposed to do, which was what? Prayer. Yeah. He knew. He took go because he knew this had to happen to be fulfilled. He did it voluntarily. He could have stopped it. He could have called down ten thousand legions of angels and pulled him off the cross if he wanted, but he didn't. 
because he fulfilled what he was supposed to do. And no matter how many ways you write it back and forth, it's the same thing. He did it for us. Can you find it? Is it good to be in favor? I don't know. I got hair stand up my neck from that one. I like it when Amy sings a little better, but that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We just need to remember that we are in favor, and I, for one, am very glad that my life's put me in a place where I know what's going to happen when I die. Amen. Amen. And I know that of all the bad days, I'm not going to have to go through what Jesus did. Because he did it. He did it. Okay? Larry, you want to come pray? Good job, Mark. You know, uh, this was a powerful message tonight, and I couldn't come at a better time because a couple of things we have to remember is Mark was saying there's a few things that happened prior to the crucifixion. Only a week before was Palm Sunday. Celebrate. Hosanna, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, our Savior, came in on a donkey. Only two days later, Crucified. From the penthouse to the outhouse. How'd the cook look? And it was terrible. <laughs> but it was prophesied, as Mark taught us and, and has the scriptures laid it out. So here's the message that we have. See, he didn't do this for nothing. He did it, like Mark said, he did it for us. So what are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? You need to go out and be the hands and feet yes. of Christ. Yes. Our biggest week, our Super Bowl, is coming up. Our, our Holy Week Ooh. is coming up. And we, it is on us to go out and praise and sing from the rooftops about our Jesus, Amen. about our Yeshua, about our Messiah, our Christ, because He can save you. I don't care what sin you are going through. I don't care what day you're going through. I don't care where you are, what your situation is, because I have been there. And I am saved. I am in faith. And that is the most important message that we have now upon us. Holy, holy is His name. Do we adore him? Yes. Do we love him? Yes. Then you got to talk about him. Yes. Sure. You got to talk about him. You got to make our invisible God visible. Very good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that without hesitation, without second guessing, when you were, were nailed on that cross, that you said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And you were so right, because we didn't know what we were doing. As Brother Stewart pointed out, every one of us had a hammer in our hand, and we, put, we helped pound that nail. So, Father, we come to you tonight and ask forgiveness of our trespasses. We come to you tonight and ask a cleansing. We come to you tonight and ask forgiveness of our sins. We come to you tonight asking for boldness because you did not give us a spirit of weakness. You gave us a, a spirit of strength. So encourage us and bold us because this is our time. This is our time that we want to reach out, shout out, and lift you up bigger and better than ever. This world is in trouble. And you must sit in heaven with tears. But Father, you can look down and smile on your house tonight here in Coral Springs because you got about 45 warriors that are going to go out and preach the gospel in your name. So we love you for that, Father. We ask you a blessing. We ask that you are going to bring people into our lives this week that we can talk to and share you with. 
thank you for Mark and the preparation that you prepared him because this was the, this was the message that you wanted us to hear tonight. This wasn't Mark's idea. This was your idea. Mark, Mark is your servant. We just love you. We thank you. We praise you. And all God's children, loudly and proudly, said, Amen.